The following teaching is possible thanks to the friends and partners of Spirit and Truth Fellowship International. Well, welcome to this teaching, which is a teaching in the continuing series on the topic of prophetic foreshadowing. Now remember that a foreshadow is a legitimate literary device that an author uses when he's writing a book that will give hints of coming uh, plot and characters and it adds drama and it adds just a, a sense of more detail to the story. Well, God is clearly an author and God certainly has the right to write the story of life the way he wants it told. He has the right to tell history the way that it will portray his story, which is Jesus Christ. So God has recorded things in his word concerning people, places, events, things that will again point us to Jesus Christ. When I was younger, I heard one time a person say that the topic of the entire Bible is Jesus Christ. And I thought to myself, well, how can that be? Because here's a story of Moses or of the, uh, the young man Joseph and David and tabernacles and things like this. Well, as I've gotten older and have searched and researched more into the Word of God, I've begun to see how God has concealed details, characteristics concerning Jesus Christ in the stories of these various people and the ways that he has told the story. So in this session, I want to look at the life of Joseph to be able to give you a little bit more tangible evidence or details of how God does this with various people. Now remember, when you're reading about the life of David or you're reading about Isaac and lots of various people through the Bible, there are characteristics which will parallel and bring clearer detail to the life of Jesus. But at the time, they the people didn't realize, well, I'm living my life and this is going to portray the Messiah. No, God has chosen to use events in their life and also to work in their lives to bring events about that would signify and point to the coming Messiah. Now, when it comes to the word of God, we call it prophetic foreshadowing because it's pointing towards future events of Jesus Christ. At the time, thousands of years earlier, it was just Joseph's life. But now, but now, the way that we see how God recorded it, it would actually was prophetic. It foretold of certain details of Christ and, the, and him being the Messiah. So again, let's go look at the specifics of Jesus, and I'm going to break down some of these details. I'm not going to go to each and every session, segment or part of the Word of God, because you certainly can do that. I just want to point you in the direction, and then you do your research. To see the life of Joseph, we have to go to Genesis, and I want to start in Genesis 37.3. Again, remember, we're looking at parallels and things that will foreshadow Jesus Christ. In Genesis 37.3, the record is that Joseph is loved by his father more than any of his other brothers. Now, that's not to say that God loves Jesus more than us necessarily, but there is an aspect that's pointing to, to Jesus being the beloved of God and him being the only begotten son of God. Also, there's a record of how Joseph is a shepherd to his father's sheep. Remember, his brothers were tending the sheep. Joseph was with his dad. He goes out into the fields too. Joseph, being one of the nomads and raised in a nomadic culture where they're, where they're taking care of sheep, he certainly understood all of the details of, of life as a shepherd and what that involves. So here's Joseph as a shepherd. Well, Jesus Christ is called the good shepherd. So again, there's a parallel there. Joseph is sent by his father to his brothers. Jesus Christ was sent by his father to us, his brothers. Joseph obeys his father. Jesus Christ does the same. Joseph is hated by his brothers. And in Acts chapter 7, verse 9, it says that they were envious and they were jealous of Christ. And that compares with Genesis 37, 4, where it, it has the same thing concerning Joseph. Also, Joseph was mocked by his brothers. You know, it's like, oh, great Joseph, the one who's beloved by, by our father. Oh, are we going to bow down to you, Joseph? And here, Jesus, we know that he was clearly mocked by his peers, too. 
And Joseph's brothers refused to accept him. And Jesus Christ's brothers the, of the tribe of Israel refused to accept him to the point where they crucified him. In the same way, Joseph's brothers at one point were going to kill Joseph. And we have Jesus Christ where he was captured and was actually killed. So can you see the parallels that are going on here? God is describing Joseph and his life. And remarkably, thousands of years later, we come to some of the very same details that are paralleling and happening in the life of Christ. What would be the point of this? What's the purpose? Well, in some ways, it adds, you know, it's almost like God taking his fingerprint or putting a stamp of approval. It's also being used as for Jesus Christ when he's reading these records in the Old Testament, he can see and relate to, wow, this is going to happen to me. Or it could also be that after the fact, when you see the life of Joseph and you see the life of Jesus, you can see this clearly has to be God moving in this situation. There's a point too in Genesis 37, 10 and 11, where it talks about, you know, uh, the dream that Joseph had and, and how uh, his father says, well, you know, what are, are we, your parents and your siblings going to be bowing down to you? And in truth, Yes, they did. They all came to Egypt and they all bowed down and, and give obeisance to Joseph because it was through him that salvation came. In the same way, every knee will bow to Jesus Christ and the whole world is saved through the act of Jesus Christ. Joseph was tossed into a pit by his brothers. He was placed into the earth. Jesus too was placed into the earth. They wanted to kill Joseph, and metaphorically, in the mind of Joseph's father, he was dead. Well, they actually did kill Jesus. They placed him in the earth, and in the mind of his father, he was dead too. So you can begin to see these, these things. There was, In fact, I read one author one time, and he said that there's over 130 parallels that can be drawn between the life of Joseph and the life of Jesus. Now, admittedly, when I went and I looked at all of 130, I thought a lot of them were a stretch. And that's something we have to be very, very, very careful of when we begin to unravel this field of foreshadowing, because it's not as if every single little detail is exact or identical to something that might happen in the future to Christ. So, for instance, Joseph was sold into slavery. Well, Jesus never was sold into slavery. And there's a record of how Potiphar's wife, you know, came onto Joseph and he had to run out with his robe. Well, I'm sure that there were women that, that threw themselves at Jesus or were sexually tempting to him. But there's no record of Jesus having to run away from that kind of a temptation and leaving his coat. So again, we need to be careful. We're looking for the things that are real and tangible. We don't want to start making things up. We don't want to start bringing our biases and skewed perspectives into the word. But we do want to look at it and see, okay, well, these are pretty clear evidences. Now, this is true in concerning Joseph. He was, he was bound in chains. Jesus was bound in chains. Joseph was imprisoned. Jesus was imprisoned. You know, Joseph was numbered with the transgressors. Jesus is numbered with transgressors. Joseph is exalted after suffering. Jesus is exalted after suffering. Joseph forgives his wrongdoers, his brothers, those that, that put him in, in this situation. Jesus clearly uh, forgives his brothers. Both Joseph and Jesus rule over Israel. Both are servants. Both are tempted. Both were about 30 years old. You know, there, there's a, a sense of Jesus being not a sense, Jesus is the spiritual bread, the manna from heaven. And here Joseph provides bread in the form of grain that saves the world. Both of them are revealed as redeemers to their brothers. Joseph was the savior of the known world. Jesus is the savior of the entire world. Uh, both interceded for their brethren. Uh, both of them kept their hearts free from bitterness despite mistreatment. And there's also, I think this is kind of profound, there's two men in the Bible that there is no record of them ever committing a sin. That's not to say they didn't, because all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there's no record of Joseph sinning, nor is there a record of Daniel sinning. But in this case with Joseph, you know, why would God choose not to have any record of him sinning? Well, I think, again, it's a foreshadow of Jesus not only, 
you know, is there a record of him never sinning? He never did sin because he was the perfect sacrifice for all mankind. So as you begin to uncover this whole field of foreshadowing, one of the, the ways in which God does it is through the characters of the Bible. Why does God choose to record about Samson or uh, Jacob or Moses? You know, what are the significance of these people? And, and it's because primarily God is clearly telling the, the story of mankind as it relates to his plan of redemption. But he's also using these characters to give future detail and a prophetic insight to the life of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Remember Joshua, fearless warmer, Nathaniel, one who forsook worldly wealth to deliver God's people. Ehud ignored the fact that the world thought he was cursed and moved forward anyway. Or Deborah, here's a female, and one who broke through cultural stereotypes and dispensed wisdom. Absolutely, Jesus Christ, they thought he was a bastard son. If that's not breaking some kind of a stereotype, come on. So you can see, you know, there's there's things with Jephthah, Samson, Boaz, Samuel, Solomon, Job, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Elijah, Elisha, Daniel. You know, the, the, the word of God is, is, is just full of detail, and especially when it concerns people. In the next session, I want to take the time to look how God also uses places to reveal some prophetic foreshadowing. <music>